Hi everybody, welcome back to my little house in the woods. I was really honored when Rachel called and asked me if I would do a program for her Christmas extravaganza. And when she said the word Christmas, I go, what? Already? But here we are. The entire year is almost gone, and it's gone just like that. I haven't gone anywhere. The only real trip I was on this year was when I went and saw Rachel. And it's just the time has flown by, and here we are at one of my favorite times of year. Ever since I was little, Christmas has been extremely special. Mom and Dad made it very special for us kids. And it's not just the gifts and the toys, it's a feeling. And every year, the baking and decorating and the beautiful lights and the... It's just a comforting, warm, happy time of year. And, you know, we need that. It's been a rough year for a lot of people, for all of us actually. And I'm looking forward to a new year with great things happening. But it's just nice that we can all have a warm, happy, merry Christmas together. And I wanted to um, bring some of that happiness that I've experienced over the years with Christmas to you. So we were not a wealthy family. So for toys, it's not like kids today that get a toy every time they go to the store. We got toys on our birthday, Easter, and Christmas. So we would plan all year thinking about what we wanted for Christmas and and if we could only have one thing what would that one thing be and so it was kind of like this anticipation and excitement what was going to happen on Christmas what were you going to get what would Santa bring and so I thought that's what I wanted to share with you this time so I brought a lot of the items here are I was actually given at Christmas time over the years I couldn't bring all of them I do have more but this is what I could fit into this little area of my little house. And so I wanted to share these pieces with you because they mean a lot to me. And so I thought you might enjoy them. So when we were little and we were trying to decide what we wanted, there was a wonderful catalog that came every year to our house. And I think a lot of you are very familiar with it. And it's this one, F.A.O. Schwartz. And in F.E.O. Schwartz, along with the dolls and, and toys and trains, there was an incredible section. It was the Stife section. And this is my mom's copy. Actually, says Mrs. Paul Port. And that's why it's in good shape. Because Kim and my copy, if we got a copy, it was rabbit-eared. It had crayon circles around the different pieces that we wanted. And look at it was like a dream book. We get to go through and decide what we wanted for Stife. And we, mom would say, circle the ones that you want and um, put a one by the one that you would like if, if we were to bring it or Santa were to bring it. So it was so exciting. It, it, it was so great. And then what we would do every year, and I'm gonna show this to you and excuse it. It might be a little embarrassing because I wasn't the cutest kid in the world we would go and get our picture taken with Santa. And these are just a few of them that I put into a frame to keep them and look at them on the wall. But there was a fantastic department store in Seattle. It was a division of Marshall Field and it was called Frederick and Nelson. And we used to go there every year to get our picture taken with Santa Claus. And in fact, Frederick and Nelson was owned by Marshall Field. It was bought in 1929, and they were the f considered or alleged to be the first ones to do the Santa photos. In their window, and I remember this vividly, there would be Santa in his throne with, with packages around, and you would go in there, and you would sit on his lap, and you would get your picture taken. Well, the very first ones were a reporter from across the street, I believe it's the Seattle Post Intelligencer, would take pictures of the kids on Santa and then he would sell them to the parents. And he made so much money, Frederick and Nelson decided to get in on that and they started taking the Santa pictures that you could purchase. So December was always so much to look forward to the whole month between the decoration and the cooking and the baking, Santa pictures and the ultimate waking up on Christmas morning to discover what you got from either Santa Claus or on Christmas Eve 
what you open that mom and dad got you. So I just wanted to share a few of these things and I hope you enjoy them. It's going to be a quick little program because I know Rachel's got so much planned for this uh, convention, this extravaganza. You are, it, it's going to be really exciting. So one of the very first things that I ever got on Christmas, I was very young because this is, I, I maybe was two or three at the most, was my Zoddy. Zoddy is one of my most dream bears. This poor little guy, um, his original eyes, one of them got pulled out. I know where the, eye, the original eyes are, but mom replaced them many, many, many years ago, probably when I was, you know, under 10 years old. But Zoddy was my favorite, and I got him in Christmas, I want to say, in 1965. I was born in, in 64, so he's very early, and Zoddy was my favorite, and I used to take Zoddy to bed, and his squeaker still kind of works a little bit, but I used to squeak him ad nauseum because he would tell me what a great little boy I am. So this, I received Zoddy in 1965, I believe. And he's still, I still have him. He sits right next to me in the bedroom. He's, he's one of my favorites. Another wonderful bear that I got was around the same time. I want to say probably, I remember getting him. So I want to say around 1966, 67. He's an original Stife. And he was bought at Frederick and Nelson. My sister got one and I got one. And he was in really good condition because he would sit up on a shelf. I never played with him. He's so wonderful. And he's got his button and his flag. But I want to say he was purchased in around 1967. A little Stife original Teddy. I just, I love him. Another early one that I got, early to me, um, was Lucky the Dwarf. I have a picture and I'll show you. I look like a, a sad little child. But Lucky was given to me in about 1965, 66. This is Lucky. I still have him, and there I am in all my glory with my sister Kim with Lucky the Dwarf. He still stands right inside the doorway to my bedroom, and he stands guard to keep all the, the bad nightmare monsters away. He's really, he's one of my most special, special childhood toys. I did get other toys besides Stife and Teddy Bears, um, but you know what? They come, they go, but the special Stife stay. Another early bear that I got as a child, and it's kind of a controversy because Kim claims him, but I claim him. And since he's in my house, I think possession is nine-tenths of the law, is my wonderful big original Teddy. He sat at the end of my twin bed, probably from, I'd say, around 19, I want to say 66 is when he was purchased. He was purchased at um, Frederick and Nelson. They had a stife sale, and he ended up being $42. And he still sits in my bedroom watching over me. I just love him. And he's a big guy. And he's got all his convention buttons and things from all the years we used to go to teddy bear conventions. Another special bear that I got in 1971, and you probably saw my picture on Facebook with him on Christmas morning, and the poor little guy, I have loved him so much. Um, this is Minky Zotti, and he's made from a synthetic, and honestly, I can see it didn't wear too well because it's all matted, but I loved him and slept with him every night for many years. He was, in 1971 I got him, when I was uh, about six years old, I'd say, and um, I just absolutely love him. But he, he's seen a lot of a love, worn and loved, and he's great. Another guy that I love, he was bought in Canada in 1970. I want, no, 69, I'd say 69 or 70. And I fell in love with him. I'd never seen anything like it. His happy smile. This is Cheeky, made by the Mary Thought Company. He still has his tag. How I left that on, I'll never know. But um, I slept with him every night. Um, the pictures behind me, you can see I did sleep with teddy bears every night in my room. 
I mean, they were just such a special part of our life. So Cheeky was, I loved the bells in his ears and his spangly eyes and that smile always made me happy. Another wonderful um, animal that I got because I was obsessed with foxes when I was little and I still am is this beautiful Stife Studio Fox from F.A.O. Schwartz. And I believe mom probably ordered them uh, in the 60s. And he's been sitting next to my um, lucky dwarf for as long as I can remember. So he was bought, probably purchased in that first time period in the 60s. And he was as big as I was. I'll never forget him and the dwarf were almost my size. I just, I love him. He's so incredible. Look at this tail. Isn't he great? And he's in still very good condition. I, I took care of my toys. I loved them and I took care of them. Okay, Dory, sit up there. Another wonderful um, animal that I love, and I, to this day, Jocko's one of my favorites, because when I was little, I wanted a real pet chimpanzee. And we went to Frederick and Nelson, and it had to be around 1970 or 71, I believe. It was probably 71. I'd have to go back and look at pictures. And I saw Jocko. And I fell in love with Jocko. And mom would say, is that what you want for Christmas? And it was probably March when I first discovered him. Oh, I want Jocko. I wanted Jocko so bad. So when we would go to Seattle, which was a, a ferry ride from where we lived, to go visit relatives or, or to take relatives somewhere, I'd, we have to go to Frederick and Nelson. I have to see if Jocko's there. Jocko has to be there. And I would go every time and there was Jocko sitting up on the shelf and I felt relieved. I knew that Jocko was going to be there and he would be okay. So then one time, I think it was probably around October or so, we went and Jocko was gone. And I probably cried for two days over Jocko being gone. But what I didn't know is my mom had snuck over to Frederick and Nelson and bought Jocko and he was waiting for me at Christmas. So Jocko lives with me. Look at his face. I just love him. You know, it's funny, as an adult, I still get so excited and I still am so in love with my toys that it's, I don't know if it's a sickness or not, but I frankly don't care. I just love them. And then also, my sister got a Shetty, um, a Shetty, his name was Shetty. I think yeah, he still got his tag. I took very good care of him. But the buttons on a lot of these of my child's toys are missing because mom thought that we would get them out and we'd swallow them. So she would take them out with the flag and they'd be put in a jar. And I still have the jar in the same cupboard that I moved down here to California with the buttons and flags of my early childhood toys. She apparently thought that we could chew this and we'd be just fine, but she did take out the button and the flags. Anyway, my sister had a larger version of this that she got probably, I'd say, in 1960, 1962. I was in love with it. I was obsessed with it. I wanted to have it. And you know how that might have caused problems between two small children. So he was waiting for me one Christmas morning. Santa was so kind to realize I should have my own Shetty. So he probably, I got him, I would say, in the mid-60s to... to so I could have Shetty. Another one that I really loved was Grissy Donkey. This is my original Grissy Donkey from, I'd say probably I was given him my first, I want to say it was my first Christmas. Um, he's made out of Drawlon. So this would have probably been 1964. This is Grissy. And he's been loved and played with so much. And then again, Frederick and Nelson, that was my dream place. They had Big Grissy, and I remember Big Grissy. Still to this day, I remember going in, and there he was. And I knew it was the mommy or daddy to my baby Grissy, and I had to have it. And then again, I had to wait and anticipate and hope and pray that Santa got my letter or mom and dad listened, and I was going to get my Grissy. And sure enough, Grissy turned up probably 
I would say around 1967, 68, somewhere around there. Grissy joined my stable of animal friends. Isn't he wonderful? He's a big guy. I just love him. Another wonderful, um, a wonderful piece that I, I'm very excited about, and I don't know if many of you have heard of this company. This was, he's called Tedward, and he was made by the Trudy Toy Company of uh, Italy. And they changed the name of their company to Trupa Toys. I'm wanting to say sometimes maybe 80s, 70s, 80s, because there was a Trudy Toy Company in America and they didn't want it to be, um, it to be confused. So it was, it was Trudy, T-R-U-D-I. And if you see some of the earlier ones with the plastic tag on them, it'll say that. And then later on they were called Trupa Toys. This guy was again at Frederick and Nelson. And there was only one of them and Kim wanted one and I wanted one. And this I'd say was in the 70s. And so mom, she behind our backs, always wanting to surprise us, asked the toy manager if he knew if they had gotten any more. And he says he knew there were three purchased, but there was only one in the toy department. And he honestly could not remember where the other two were. Or he didn't know they'd gone around the store somewhere. So my mom went to four floors in Frederick and Nelson department store, found one in the baby department, and found one downstairs in the candy department. So at Christmas, I got one in a blue romper. Kim got one in a pink dress, and mom bought one for herself. So we have three of these wonderful Trudy teddy bears and I have mom in mine, and Kim still has hers up in Washington. But I just, they're so wonderful, and they're so squishy. And they're just, they're really special. Okay. And then, you really can't have Christmas without stocking stuffers. And Santa at our house loves stocking stuffers. And let's see if I can show you the other one. I should be more prepared, but we'll do these first. These are made by Suzy Toy of Germany. Um, I believe they were manufactured in Mauritius or Mauritania, one of the two. They were designed in Germany and he still has his little paper tag. I know I got these in 1971 and it was, mom said it was mama and baby boy. So these are just really cute. You can still find these. I think they're just sweet and they have their little plastic noses and they're made of mohair and they're soft stuffed. And they later came, I don't know if they're still being manufactured today, but I know now I've seen them with plastic tags. This is the earlier paper tag. So if you see these, it's Suzy toy. They're so sweet. Also, let's see, where did I put it? I wish I was better organized. I have, well, let's keep going here. Um, this is one, another one of my favorite bears that I believe I got in 1972. 72 at, again, Frederick and Nelson department stores. And these bears were made by Hoynick, H-E-U-N-E-C. They also did a bear called, it was a bear that had a phonograph inside and it, and it, it played uh, different sayings in German. But these came out, Kim got one and I got one for Christmas. And I just love their sweet little faces and their high, high foreheads. And they're made of mohair and mohair paw pads, glass eyes. And they were made in Germany in, by the Hoynick company. So wonderful. And then we have another one of my very favorite toys. This, oh, sorry, Mr. Fox, please forgive me. This is the Steif Schnauzer, and I called him J.P. Woofy. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I got him when I was 15 years old. 
But when I first saw this guy in Frederick and Nelson sitting on the shelf, you'd think I was five years old. There was something about him that I absolutely fell in love with. And I had to have him. And he turned up at Christmas in 1979. I have the picture where I'm opening the package. Mom had wrapped him, not in a box, but wrapping paper all over him. So I kind of knew what he was on Christmas. But I, I yelled and screamed like I'd been five years old. J.P. Woofie. And then I had to get the smaller one later on that I purchased with my chore money. And it was the little seated one. Looks exactly the same, but he's seated. And that's J.P. Woofie Jr. So he... he is just there's something so wise and wonderful about him you know you'd go to school the day after thanksgiving or the day after christmas and kids would say what'd you get for christmas and they'd say oh i got a fishing rod or i got this or i got i'd always say clothes because i just thought i would be the biggest geek and people would make fun of me forever if i said oh i got a teddy bear or i was so excited about this stuffed dog from a german company they would think i'm a little little crazy because Back then, you know how kids can be, you know, if you didn't get a fishing rod or the newest RC car or, or Lego set, you were kind of just not one of the cool kids. <laughs> so I, I just, I love JP Woofy, as you can still tell. He, he's on a trunk at the end of my bed and he's just, he's just wonderful. So I think this one is probably one of my favorites. This was made. In probably 19, I'd say I was probably five or six years old, and my mom made it. And I know, Rachel, we talked about it in another video, how back then you could not get mohair. So we would use alpaca coat linings. My mom would make teddy bears out of alpaca coat linings out of the old men's coats. And she so loved the antique bears. And this is one that I got at Christmas. My sister got a brown bear, and I got this gray bear. And he is truly one of my greatest treasures. And every Christmas, you know, he gets dressed up in different things. He's in his nightshirt right now. But he's very special to me because it came from my mom's two hands. And I can't tell you how much it meant to me that I got him at Christmas. And he's still with me. I think I have got everybody on my on my desk. So I like I said this is going to be a very short program, but I just wanted to bring you into my home and show you the wonderful wonderful Christmas morning experiences. And again, I want to thank Rachel and Rachel again, thank you for my wonderful blow up pictures. They're really they're really spectacular to me you know over the years i can't believe time goes like it does because i remember that like it was yesterday and here i am half a century later i hate to even say that it, ugh, half a century later i'm still surrounded by teddy bears and how blessed i am that i am to to be able to bring it to you my passion to share it with you Rachel, thank you. Thank you from all of us, especially this year. You have brought us together and made us not feel so alone. And you've shared your love and kindness of the industry. You really are a special person. And I wish you and Derek the merriest of merriest of Christmases. And I know it's going to be hard. This is going to be a really hard one for you, Rachel. It's still hard for me after, after eight years. But you've got us. You've got me, and we love you very, very much. And now I have to go and fill up this wonderful Santa bag with some of the wonderful things that we're going to be offering in the sales room. So thank you again, Rachel, from the bottom of my heart, and thank you, everyone out there. I wish you a Merry Christmas, and above all, a healthy Christmas, and a Happy New Year, and I'll see you next year next year in January at the virtual doll convention in in January of next year so thank you again and God bless everyone stay safe stay healthy healthy uh, so thank you from my little house to yours Merry Christmas <laughs>